All right, I have a big transformation for you guys today. This is my client, Nancy, and she actually found me off of YouTube, so that was really cool. She contacted me on Instagram and loved my tutorials, so she came over. So I just want to say thanks to Nancy for being my first YouTube client. That was a really cool experience for me. But we took her to this really ashy blonde and kind of a smudged root. So she also wanted it to look like it had like a balayage-esque type of look. And this was just one try, guys, so I'm really, really impressed and I'm absolutely obsessed with the way it looks. And if you have a client who wants to be really ashy blonde like this, keep watching. Okay, so to begin, of course, I'm going to do some face frame highlights. I do three on each section, so two at the temples and then one at the top. So. When I do those face frame highlights, I make sure they're all woven and I just weave them back to back um, and just make sure you completely saturate the hair. And then I'm going to go into a mohawk section and do a partial highlight. So when I do this partial highlight, I take weaves for every section. And for these weaves, I'm going to do a much finer weave. Usually if somebody wants to have a lot of dimension, and show a lot more of a dramatic look, I'll do a thicker weave. But for this, I wanted it to look more natural and blended, so I'm doing really fine weaves for her. And I'm doing these back to back, and I'm totally saturating everything in the foil. And I'm going to take that partial highlight all the way to the back of her head, right past the crown, so that when she does pull her hair down, that entire back of the head is covered. So make sure you go all the way to the back of the crown section of the head, just so you're safe there and you don't have a big dark spot that is missing from not being colored. So now I'm going to begin by taking horizontal sections all the way up the head. If you guys watched my last tutorial with the Dusty Rose Balayage, this is the exact same color technique that I used, but I'm just going to do a um, ashy blonde toner instead of doing the rose gold. So if you find that you need something quick and easy to get done on a client that wants a very big change, this is a great technique to use and they're going to love the results because you're basically giving them everything that they want but you're not killing yourself doing it. So as you can see, I'm taking big V sections again and I'm completely saturating the ends and make sure to leave out that depth in the center because that's really what makes these looks look so gorgeous to have all that beautiful dimension. You don't want to totally brighten everything and then make them look just whitewashed because that's not as pretty of a color look. So make sure you keep that dimension open there and I'm just taking horizontal sections all the way up the head on either side and completely covering them with foil and that way you're insulated with the balayage so the heat gets in there and really lifts to the total amount because for girls who want to go this ashy you all know that you need to get it as bright as possible so that's what I'm doing here I'm letting it sit as long as possible and I check her hair every 10 minutes to make sure the integrity is still good and how you do that is by grabbing the ends and you pull and of course if there's any type of pull where some hair actually starts to stretch or come off definitely take it off <laughs> but hopefully you'll never get to that point because using a bond builder and not using too high of a developer will keep you totally safe there so make sure you do that just to protect your client's hair because obviously that is the number one goal and make sure that you explain to your clients like hey this might not happen the first time it might take a couple times and they need to understand you are the professional and you know best and you're not trying to lie to them or cut down their dreams but if you don't tell your clients the truth and be honest with them they're gonna have way too high of expectations and then you're gonna look like you are being dishonest, which isn't usually true, but sometimes clients think that. So make sure you back yourself up with all the knowledge that you have because you guys are amazing hairstylists and 
really trust in yourself and your own opinion and let your clients know that this is you trying to be the best hairdresser you could be and keep their hair as great of a condition as possibly can be. Okay, so once you finish the back, I'm just going to gather all that extra hair that was coming out from those foils and I just lightly tease those sections back just so we mostly get the ends. And I'm just going to balayage the ends really quick. I figure, why not, because when those are hanging out, you're going to see those dark lines. So for this look, I mostly want everything to be light on the bottom. So just grabbing those and doing a quick little balayage on them throwing a couple foils on there and then she is good to go. So now I'm going to check her face frame highlights. I always check those as soon as I'm done because they process the fastest. So if you need to take those out, just grab a wet towel and pull them out while they're sitting. And then if everything else needs to process, then you can let them process. But her face frames here weren't done yet. Um, I think I needed about 10 more minutes on them because she was pulling a pretty gold color because she is so dark so I'm gonna let her sit for about I think about another 20 to 30 minutes and I just focused most of the heat on the bottom and on the ends and when I did look in the foils at the top after about 20 more minutes they were totally good so once the ends were heated and the top was done then I pulled everything out and did the glaze which I'm going to show you in just a second Alright, so now I'm using a 3N for the root, and I know you guys might be thinking that is so dark, how is that going to show up at all with any of these highlights, but when you put such a dark color on such light hair, like this is almost going to look like a 5N on her root, and sometimes I put a 5 on, and I really wish that I had more of a dramatic feel, so I gave 3N a shot here and I it was perfect, it's exactly what I wanted it to look like. So I did about two capfuls of 3N and then Shades EQ equal parts. And if you guys haven't used Shades EQ, it is one of the best toners ever. It's sheer, but it still gives a, packs a punch as far as toning out yellow and orange and brassy tones. And it also has just the most beautiful look to it. So I highly re recommend that if you guys are experimenting with any different color brands, Redken Shades EQ is by far my favorite for toners. So I'm just going to go and take 
pretty much like vertical sections and paint the root down about an inch. And what I like to do is make sure that when I'm painting the root, I keep the front out until the very end because I want that to be poppy and bright. And just make sure you just take that section out because your clients, that's what they wanna see. When they get done with their color services, 99% of the time they want that poppy color in the front and that'll just save you guys the hassle of having to go back and do a quick highlight in the front because it wasn't bright enough or anything like that. So just keep that front piece out until the very end. It'll change everything about your colors. And I'm just gonna go around her head and do basically an inch down with every section and I'm just painting it on lightly and just make sure you don't put too much on the brush so it doesn't fall on any other part of the hair because once that grabs it would especially grab on the ends because they are so porous so just take your time and make sure you get um, completely saturated all over the root and then I'm gonna take my other toner and I'm gonna apply that all over the ends and really make sure you take small sections and completely saturate everything and brush through if you want because that'll just make sure everything is evenly distributed and your client won't have any orange spots or any weird spots that are left over and you'll have a very happy client. So I'm going to begin blow drying her and right now I'm using Redken Guts. It's a volumizer that has this targeted pump on it which is really great because Wherever I spray that pump, it goes exactly where I spray it. So that's a really nice feature. And now I'm gonna begin blow drying the front of her face first with my Elkum. And I'm gonna make sure that I get it nice and smooth and dry by drying it from wet to dry. And once I keep blowing this out, you guys are gonna see how beautiful this color turned out and how there's still a lot of dimension in there. It's not just a bunch of blonde everywhere. and I just really love the way it turned out on her. She looks so pretty with this light color. And I was really worried because her hair was so dark that it was gonna pull this orange brassy color. She's been doing a lot of dark on her hair for a while, but using that pH Bond Builder from Redken has really saved her hair and really brought her to the level that she wanted without damaging it at all. So I'm really, really happy with it. Alright, so here is the final look, and as you can see, it got super light all over, but it still left a lot of dimension, which is exactly what I wanted. Her ends are super bright and poppy, and everything was really easy to tone because we lifted her to such a light level that it just grabbed that beautiful creamy blonde color. So thank you guys so much for watching, I appreciate it so much, and I can't wait to show you my next tutorial. Thanks guys, see ya!